So I wanted to talk about this article because this guy is the federal secretary of education, which is, I will go on record, um, saying that I think should be abolished. So Biden education secretary encouraged teacher support for woke curriculum report. And this is the New York Post. And this is from a few years ago, April 27th, 2021. U.S. Education Secretary Miguel Cardona wanted to ensure his team was involved and made sure teachers supported the new woke curriculum. So this is the teacher of the year that he made the teacher of the year that she studied black and Latino studies for her master's program, has created program programming incorporating social justice for race and gender inequalities. She volunteered teaching in Ghana and Ecuador. And that, you know, well, that's fantastic, honestly. Understands curriculum reduces invisibility for students of color and creates global preparedness for all students. I, you know, I don't want to say that I think that, that that's a bad thing. I think I think it's totally okay for that in theory, right? Like for in in theory, people to be studying their culture. But I think in practice, the way I see it is that it's taught in a certain way, it's taught with critical race theory as the backbone. Okay, so critical race theory dictates that race is an underlying dynamic of all human interaction and views the human experience as a constant power struggle between the races, often with a focus on white privilege. And, you know, un unlike a lot of other people perceived as right wing, I, I definitely think that white privilege is a thing, but it's like black privilege, black privilege is also a thing. Female privilege is a thing, just like male privilege is. And I, th I think that people have different benefits to what their identity is, how other people perceive them. But it really depends on like what your specific values are and what you're trying. So I, I think we should be fair and not just like, yes, white privilege exists. OK, but like people act like white privilege is the end all be all, that that's the only important thing. And that's applying a social construct to something that's absolute. And I just. You know, I don't think we should ever do that in any of these cases. Um, yeah. So race is an underlying dynamic of all human interaction and views the human experience as a constant power struggle between the races, often with a focus on white privilege. So like, I, I think the only, the really the issue here is that it wants you to focus specifically on that factor of race. And you can't talk about class. You can't talk about um, colorism of the fact that taller people make more money than shorter people of like all these other things of like the designation of Hispanic tends to benefit whiter Hispanics, which were really like a lot of the people who were actually doing colonialism because you could be a white guy in America that's like Irish and your family did not participate in colonialism, like your background didn't. And then you get lumped in with people that did, even though it shouldn't matter because it's your ancestors, but I get it, historical wrongs, whatever, people care about that. Um, but it's it's deciding that that's the one factor that that the other factors aren't as important. I mean, that is a man made idea and we shouldn't be giving like we shouldn't be having that as underlying curriculum in anything. It shouldn't be underlying. We shouldn't have something that is not an immutable truth being the underlying truth in what we're teaching children. OK, so along with Democratic Governor Ned Lamont, Cardona steered Connecticut to become the first state in the nation to require all high schools to offer courses on African-American, Black, Puerto Rican, and Latino studies. So all high schools to offer these courses. What about Asian studies? What about Irish studies? Like I'm into my Irish freaking descent, background, whatever. Like I want that. Why can't we all get that? I'm not kidding. I want it. But they want to, but like, but specifically if they're, if they're looking at these, number one, why are you saying Puerto Rican? Like, why is Puerto Rican? It's just in Latino. Is it because Cardona is Puerto Rican and he wanted to emphasize Puerto Rican above Latino by actually having it in there? I mean, I assume that's what it is. Which is like, it's it, like this gets down to the point that I'm talking about. Like when you do, when you talk about it like this, when you specify certain races and you specify certain reasons, certain like characteristics socially constructed characteristics like race in what you're you're making is your immutable truth the underlying dynamic of all human interaction is the verbiage used here then you're you're by definition you're prioritizing something created by man and i know people think that's fine but like that is something that's not going to stand the test of time and that's what these sort of things should be doing 
Curriculum states the goal is to analyze how race, power, and privilege influence group access to citizenship, civil rights, and economic power. And like, look, that sounds fine to me, but I bet the implementation is way off because I've seen it. This curriculum acknowledges that by connecting the story of people of color in the U.S. to the larger story of American history, connecting the story of people of color in the U.S. to the larger story of American history, the fact is that more inclusive, culturally relevant content in classrooms leads to greater student engagement and better outcomes for all. I mean, I, I don't know how they're measuring that. I'm not going to look into the specifics of it right now. Um, just last week, it emerged that a new rule proposed by Cardona's U.S. Education Department says financial grants could encourage schools to incorporate teaching and learning practices that reflect the diversity, identities, histories, and contributions and experiences of all students. Cites as examples the New York Times Magazine's controversial 1619 project and the work of Ibram X. Kendi, author of the best-selling book How to Be an Anti-Racist, which I've talked about at other points. Um, it also says that racially, ethnically, culturally, and linguistically responsive teaching and learning practices contribute to what has been called an identity safe learning environment, Ugh. where teachers strive to assure students that their social identities are an asset rather than a barrier to success. <coughs> I mean, like it's just, it's the problem i have with this and and we're going to talk about culturally re relevant pedagogy one of the things that they were talking about briefly the, the problem that i have is that it promotes division it promotes division in the sense that it promotes these identities that are different than the american identity and i look i don't think full assimilation is necessarily the path i think there's a middle ground here but it, it, i've seen it in practice and i can't like you know going into more specifics would just take so long to explain and i might do that in the future but it's it, when you promote specific identities within one country when you co promote these smaller identities that are a subdivision inherently these identities are going to be tied to different beliefs and inherently some of those beliefs are going to be at odds with beliefs of other people in the country and i i just it's rough to to like to sell that as a country like that just seems inherently disruptive to me and i guess that's like promoting not having a diverse society but like i think that we should just be careful about what diversity we have and be honest about it um because when you have diversity that ends up with what i've seen recently which is like uh, like and i'm going to go into another article in a second but sometimes these conflicts of identity can can fester into like people within one country actually hating and wanting to kill another group in that country. And that's just not good for anybody. Like, and, and obviously I'm referring right now to what's going on with Israel and Palestine and the protests that I've seen from Palestinians and from Israelis and their um, supporters, their, uh, the people that are in their camp talking about um, it, like in the streets and, and both of them, are just like they're i i've seen both groups talking like basically genocide on the other group and like i i don't like that sucks man that sucks like regardless of the whole situation i mean that's a bad thing um and it's weird that that's like in the country like like how somebody should have known that like having these types of different diversities this specific diversity between these groups of people who then the government curriculum is then promoting these identities and they're not assimilating people to have similar ways of living. So you start to live in a low trust society where, where people don't have similar ways of living because they've been compartmentalized and they've been told to concentrate on other subdivisions other than the country. So at what point do you just stop having a country when you stop having a people that identify with that country and with that identity? And when people, have a different idea about what that identity means. That's when you have the fusion and, and everything. But it, I mean, this is such an extreme case and it shows having like uh, having so many differences between people, having like these massive differences where like people are literally calling for genocide on the other group and they're, they're in the same country. They're citizens of the same country. That that should be crazy. It is crazy. It it's like you should know that that shouldn't be a good idea. 